If you want to learn how to create dope sci-fi looping animations like this one, today's video is just for you. We're going to use geometry nodes and very simple techniques to create this particular loop that's super customizable so that you can create so many variations based on your taste and your requirements. With that, let's go ahead and actually begin today's tutorial. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then we'll switch this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll tap N to remove the side panel and press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree. Then we can just zoom in, select the group input, and delete our default cube by tapping X. Now we require an icosphere on which we're going to get all of the points to actually instance smaller spheres. So let's press Shift A and search for an icosphere and then plug that into the group output. Next, we actually want this to be a little larger. So we're going to increase the radius to a value of two. And right now there are very few points. So to increase the number of points, we increase the subdivisions to a value of five. Now you can see this particular icosphere is made up of many individual points. Point here, point here, point here, and so on and so forth. On each of these points, I want more spheres. So to create something on every point, we use an instance on points node. Now for this, to actually work, we need an instance object and we want it to be a sphere so we can use another icosphere. We can search for the icosphere by pressing shift A and then plugging the mesh into the instance. But right now the icosphere is way too large. So let's reduce the radius down to something like 0.1. And of course you can decrease it even more or make it slightly larger based on your requirements. For now, a value of 0.1 should do good for me. Next, these still have a very flat shading. So I can fix that by pressing shift A and searching for a set shade smooth node and plugging that in right over here in between the icosphere and instance. So now that we have that, it is shaded smooth, but you can clearly see that the edges are not at all well defined. So to actually make this look a lot better, you can just increase the subdivisions and you can see it starts looking more and more like a sphere and the shading gets fixed. But remember, the more subdivisions you have, the slower your render is going to be. But I think a value of three should be good enough for everything, but just for previewing, I'm going to keep it at a subdivision level of two. Next, we actually want to displace this. So to displace it, I'm going to go ahead and move the group output to the side, press shift A and search for a set position node. Now we can go ahead and actually move it with some noise by scaling the original position by some values. So let's press shift A, search for a position node, which is going to tell us exactly where each point is. And then if we were to just directly offset it by the position, you can see it gets pushed up by that much. But that's not what we want to do. We want to scale this position based off of some noise. Let's press shift A and search for a vector math node. If you don't know what the vector math node does, you can definitely check out this video over here. It'll give you a deeper understanding of what all of these different options do. But for today's tutorial, we're going to be using the scale option, which is present right over here. And then if you see, we can scale it down to a value of zero, which will give it the original position and a value of one will push it over to double whatever the position was. But we can control this using a noise texture. So let's press shift A and search for a noise texture. And now simply plug this color value or the factor value into the scale. Now, once I plug that in, you can see we get a lot of randomness and it might be too strong for our liking. So to fix that, we can go ahead and reduce the scale down to something like 0 0.5. And now it looks a lot smoother and hence much better for our purposes. But clearly the effect is not strong enough. So to increase the strength, we can just push this over to the side and then press shift A and search for a math node. And this time we're going to change this from add to multiply and multiply it by a value of something like two. Now you can see the strength is a lot larger, but it still seems to have too much detail within the noise. So to make it a lot smoother, you can just reduce the detail down to zero. Now that might make it a little too smooth, but it's completely dependent on what you require. For now, I think a detail value of one will be good enough. The next thing is I don't want the displacement to occur at every single point. So to actually reduce the area in which the displacement happens, I'm going to use a color ramp node. Let's just bring this over to the side and press shift A and search for a color ramp. And then we can plug that in right after the noise texture and bring this black value in. And as you can see, it acts like a mask that allows certain areas to be selected for the displacement and certain areas to be excluded from the displacement. So another thing is right now, the fall off is very sharp. To make it just a little smoother, we can change this from linear to ease. And now you can see the fall off will be a lot smoother. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and just bring this black slider in just so that we get some more areas affected. And maybe this value is a little too high as well. So I'll change this to a value of 1.5. So now that looks really good. 
But the last thing that we want to do for the modeling is actually ensure that the particles that are further away or the ones that get displaced the most also become a lot smaller. So in order to make them get smaller, just before the group output, we can go ahead and press Shift A and search for a scale instances node. Now, if we plug this in, we can change the scale by playing around with these values. So the way we're going to do this is by using the original position and mapping that in such a way that all of the points that are not moved do not change size, but the ones that do get moved change size. So let's press Shift A, search for another vector math node, and this time change this from add to length. Then we're going to check the length of the position by plugging this in right over here. And if we were to directly plug this value into the scale, the ones that are further away become larger. We want the exact opposite to occur. So we press Shift A and search for a map range node. Now the problem with the map range is that we need to determine what the min and max values are over here. So remember, the minimum position is equivalent to the radius of the initial icosphere, which is 2 meters. So we're going to keep the min value at a value of 2. Then the max is going to be greater than a value of 2, and that's going to be how much ever we scaled this by. So we scaled it by a value of 1.5, so it's going to be 1.5 times the position, which is 2. So that'll be 2 star 1.5, which is going to be a value of 3. So now, if you actually take a look at this, this is a really cool effect that you could do where the particles that are closer to the sphere are smaller and the ones that are further away are larger. If that's what you want to do, you can go ahead and do that. But I want to flip the effect. So to flip the effect, I'm going to change the 2 min to a value of 1 and the 2 max to a value of maybe 0.1. And that way, the particles that are far away become smaller. Maybe a value of 0.25 is also going to be good enough. So I think that looks really good and is exactly what I was looking for. Next, we can start off with the actual animation. For the animation, we're going to go ahead and go to our output properties and change the frame rate from 24 to a value of 60 so that we get a 60 FPS animation. The output resolution, we're going to make it 200. And while we're here, we can determine how long we want the animation to be and set the output folder. So I want the animation to be maybe 20 seconds long, which is going to be 1,200 frames at 60 FPS. And output folder, I'm going to store the output wherever I save the blend file. So I have to be sure to actually save the blend file. Next, I'm going to change the file format from PNG to FFmpeg video. And I'm going to change the encoding from Matroska to MPEG4 with an output quality of Perceptually Lossless. Once I have all of this set, let's go ahead and start with the motion. The first thing is I want to make every single particle here itself already look like it's rotating in a fairly random way. The way I'm going to do that is by pressing Shift A and searching for a scene time node and simply plugging this second into the rotation. Now, if I was to just do this, and play the animation by using the spacebar or pressing this button, you'll see absolutely nothing happens. And that's because this is currently rotating all of the instances individually. We don't want to rotate the instances. We want to rotate this icosphere. So in order to do that, we have to transform the geometry. So let's press Shift A and search for a transform geometry. Plug that in right over here. And then instead of plugging it into the rotation over there, I'm going to plug the seconds into the rotation over here. So now if we play around with the animation, you can see every single particle is moving. Now. It seems to be moving a little too fast. And also, we don't know exactly how it's going to be looping or when it's going to loop. So to ensure that we get it perfectly looping, what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for another map range node. Plug that in right over here. And this time, I'm going to have the from max to be a value of 20 because we know that we've set this up to be 20 seconds long. Then I'm going to make the 2 max to be a value of 2 star pi, which is one full rotation, or in other words, one exact loop. So once we have one exact loop created, we can then go ahead and actually animate the noise texture. So to animate the noise texture, we can actually change this from 3D to 4D and then play around with this W value. So now if we were to play the animation and play around with the W value, that's what we get, which looks really organic and really sci-fi and in my opinion, pretty cool. But in order to make this loop again, we're going to use a technique that we've used in multiple videos before, which is using two noise textures. So let's go ahead and Duplicate this noise texture, press Shift A and search for a mix color node and plug that in right over here. Next, let's plug this in over here and change this W value to be a value of zero and also this value to be a value of zero for now. Next, I'm going to increase the timeline a little bit and go back to frame zero and just hover over this W value and tap I, change the factor down to zero and tap I. And now we're going to have to determine how much we want this W value to be. Whatever this W value is, is going to determine how much of motion there is. So I'm going to make this initially a value of 
minus one and then tap I, or let's actually start off with a value of minus five. Then on frame 1200, I can go ahead and just increase this factor all the way to one, tap I, this value to be a value of five and then tap I, which has to be essentially the positive value of whatever negative value we gave over here. And then this negative value is then going to become a value of zero and then tap I. So now if we go ahead and play the animation, we'll get an idea of how fast it's actually moving. And if you see, it's currently going to be slow at the beginning, faster in the middle, and then slow towards the end again. That's because the default interpolation is Bezier. To make it linear, we tap A to select everything and just shift select all of these nodes. Then again, A, T, and then linear. So now if we play the animation, we should get a realistic idea. Similarly, if you switch on overlays, you can see that it might be dropping and playing a little slower. So to see a realistic idea, we can change this from play every frame to frame dropping. That way we can see how fast it's actually moving. And right now, I don't think it's fast enough at all. So I'm going to have to go back here all the way to frame zero and maybe change this to a value of minus 25 and then tap I. And then all the way at frame 1200, I'm going to change this value to be a value of 25 and then I'll tap I. So now let's go ahead and see how this is moving. And I think that looks really nice. If we switch off overlays once again, this is what it looks like. And that seems to be pretty organic, giving this wild look that I wanted. Next up is the actual shading. So let's go ahead and move this out to the side. Press Shift A, search for a set material node, plug that in right over here. And we can just choose the default material as we're not using that for anything else. Another thing is I want to actually have this position stored. So in order to keep this position stored, I'm going to press shift A and search for a store named attribute and plug that in right over here. I want to store a floating point number, but not for every point, but for every instance. Now the name, I'm just going to call it dist because it's going to be dependent on the distance from the center and the value can simply be the output of this map range node. Let's go ahead and plug this into the value. Or if you want the full range of it, you can actually just duplicate this map range node, plug this value in over here and change this to a value of zero so that the output is actually going to go from zero to one and we get the entire range. Let's plug that into the value. Now we can go ahead and use dist in the shader editor. So to actually see the changes, let's go ahead and shift our viewport shading to rendered and then switch this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the base color to be far darker. So maybe a gray value like this looks good. And then I'm going to play around with the actual emission. So I'm going to press shift A and search for an attribute node and select the attribute that we just created, which was dist, D-I-S-T. Next, if we plug this factor into the string, you can see absolutely nothing happened. And that's because remember we stored it for every instance and this is set to geometry. So we need to change this from geometry to instancer. And now you can see we have some points that are fairly dark and most of them fairly white. So let's go ahead and actually control that using a color ramp. So let's press shift A, search for a color ramp and plug that in right over here. Next, I'm going to flip the color ramp so that we have particles that are not being moved as black and the other particles as white. And then we can just bring this in until we get most of this area flat or the flat areas to be whatever this color wants us. We want it to be. I want it to be black itself. I think this looks good enough. And I'm also going to change this from linear to ease. Now that I have that set, I want these to actually be a different color. So I'm going to change this from white to any color. So it completely depends on what you're going for. Maybe a bright green or maybe an orangish color, bluish. It's all up to you. I'm going to go with this color for this tutorial. Next up, I actually want these areas to be a lot brighter. So I'm going to press shift A, search for a math node, plug that in right over here. And instead of add, I'm going to change this to multiply. And I'm going to multiply it by a value of two or maybe even a value of three. Now that we have that, I think this will look a lot better with good lighting and our camera. So let's go ahead and create all of our background and scene setup. So for our backgrounds, first thing is I want a sphere inside. So I'll press shift A, search for an icosphere, which is under the mesh menu. And then I can just scale it up, not by a value of two, but something very close to two. So maybe 1.9 and that looks good. Next, I want to give that its own material. So let's press new. And I'm just going to change the base color to be that same darkish gray and that should be good. Then let's create a nice background plane. So let's press shift A, search for a mesh plane and then just scale it up by some arbitrarily large amount and then Rx90 to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Then I can go ahead and just press GY to move it back until we have it fairly far and that looks good. Next, I'm going to give it its own material. So just press this plus button to create a new material and I'm simply going to just 
bring it down to get something like that. Next, I actually want the color to be very similar. So I could go ahead and do that, or I can keep this at a value of gray itself and make this light emit out some sort of color. So let's go to the light properties down here and change this color to be that sort of bluish color. So I think that looks pretty cool. Now this area looks a little too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the light by pressing shift D and just bringing it down over to that side. And to light this area up, I'm just going to move it on the Y axis by a bit and just grab it and move it to about there. Now that looks pretty good. Now let's actually place our camera. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear its location, Alt R to clear its rotation, then R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we can press this camera icon to go into the camera view and then press G Y and just drag up to go back. Now what I'm actually going to do is bring it close like that and reduce the focal length to something like 25 so that we get a wider field of view and more exaggerated warping towards the edges. So now I think that looks pretty cool and it is a perfectly looping animation. Now the actual light at, on the background seems to be like it's in arbitrary places. So I'm just going to add one more light over here to make it like a nice triangular symmetry. So let's duplicate this light, press Shift D and bring it down to about there to give it that nice triangular symmetry. And I think that looks good. The last thing left to do to make this look really good is adding in some nice compositing. So let's go to this drop down menu, switch this compositor to always so that we can actually see the effects of the compositor and then switch this from the shader editor to the compositor. Then let's press this use nodes button and then press Shift A and search for a glare node or we can directly search for the glare bloom. Let's plug that in right over here. And now you can see there's a little bit of bloom going on around those brighter spots. If you want the bloom effect to be even more prominent, back in the shader editor with this object selected, you can increase this multiply to be even higher values and you can see the bloom goes even more. And you could maybe just bring that back in just by a tiny little bit to make it look a lot cooler. The last thing is maybe if at all you do want some reflections to occur on the sphere at the back, you can go over to your render properties and switch on ray tracing. And that might give you some nicer reflections internally, but do check if that is something that you actually want because it will take up some more render time. And if it's not making much of a difference for you, then you might as well keep it off. But with that, once you're happy with the way everything looks, you can go ahead and just press render animation. I hope you learned something cool from this particular tutorial and you can implement the ideas to create amazing animations. I have been focusing a little bit on algorithms and deep dives, and I will be making far more of those videos in the coming weeks because those tend to have a much higher audience retention. And I want to make things that all of you actually want to watch. So let me know if you do want more tutorials or if you want to see more conceptual videos like my demystifying series. And I'll definitely create content according to your requirements. But until the next few videos come out, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.